tuning in. If you're a musical sort of person, you'll probably be familiar with a tuning fork. But if you're not, let me just describe it briefly. A tuning fork is a U-shaped piece of metal which you can tap and it gives you a specific note. It gives you a true note, let's say the note A. So if you want to know what the note A is in order to be able to sing it accurately, the tuning fork is the way to do it. It's the way to tune yourself in to a true A. And if you're tuned into the tuning fork, you know you're always going to be right. The tuning fork always gives you a true A. Whereas most people who sing, or are musicians, most people find it quite difficult to get the true note all the time on their own and to stay on it unwaveringly. Now there's an electronic version of the tuning fork for the smartphone and when you use it you get this lovely picture of this metal vibrating at a particular frequency, a particular wavelength. So when I sing I'm trying to get my voice to tune in to get onto the same vibration, the same wavelength and to become one with that particular note. I find that a really helpful way to think about Jesus and what the life of Jesus means for us today. I think of Jesus as a human being whose humanity is perfectly tuned in to the divine frequency, to the divine wavelength, the divine note, perfectly tuned in to the Father. And I think the message that we can take from that is that as in Jesus, every other human being has that same capacity to resonate with God, to sing the same song as God, you might say, to reverberate with God. And with that sort of understanding, it's, I think, very helpful in getting us to make sense of what it might mean to imitate Jesus or to follow Jesus, words that are very often used in Christian discourse. With that sort of understanding in mind, we quickly realise that following Jesus or imitating Jesus is not so much about reading the Gospel stories, observing what Jesus did and working out how to do it the same. After all, I can't possibly be a Jew who lived 2,000 years ago. It's more about doing what he does by trying to get onto the Father's wavelength and then living out the effects and the consequences of that, singing this new tune in our own time and our own place and in our own way. So when we sit to meditate, we have this simple tuning device for getting onto the divine wavelength. We have the mantra. The mantra which helps us resonate with the spirit of Jesus dwelling in our heart. So we give our word, our tuning device, our mantra, our attention. We try to resonate with it. And when we go out of tune with it, when we wander off, when our attention becomes vague or unfocused, we come back, we retune, we refine our tuning, we refine the closeness of attention that we're giving to it. And although what happens during the time of meditation may sometimes be easy and feel good, or sometimes we'll be more distracted and not feel very satisfactory, what we generally feel afterwards is better, more spacious, more harmonious, more in tune with ourself, we feel more ourself, and we will generally discover that it makes our day go better because of that. But that's not all, I think. 
It's not only that through our daily practice of meditation that we become more harmonious with ourself, more one with ourself, more true to ourselves and able to live out of that much more, but we gradually discover that we're more connected with others, more harmonious with others, more in tune with others. We're learning to listen better to others, to hear their own particular song, to get onto their wavelength. And we're learning to harmonize with that. We're learning to appreciate that mine isn't the only note I can hear or want to hear or care about hearing. Because the marvelous thing about this divine frequency is that all created things vibrate on that divine frequency. And if we tune into the divine wavelength, then we are inevitably tuning into the wavelength on which everything is created, on which everything is resonating. Each created thing has its own true and individual note, like each person in a choir has their own particular quality of voice to bring to it. And when they come together, they sing and create one glorious harmony, one glorious divine harmony. So, sit down, sit still, say your word and listen to it faithfully with ever-deepening attention.